Greetings everybody, my name is Tommy the Keyblade Master and welcome to my channel and another one of my videos. Now one of the things I do whenever I review an RPG or a large sandbox game, rather than going through a whole video nitpicking through the stories, because I like to nitpick stories when there's a lot of narrative in video games, rather than doing that in my review, I've decided to do a separate story analysis. So I have a whole video to kind of nitpick something and I don't have to worry about it getting in the way of my review. Today we're doing Birth by Sleep. And we're going to be nitpicking it a bit, and I'm going to be telling you a whole bunch of stuff that happens. There will be some plot spoilers, but I'll try not to ruin the whole game for you. Basically, the game starts off with an optional intro that you can skip after watching it the first time through. Man, wouldn't that have been a useful feature in Kingdom Hearts 2? Anyways, the intro is actually pretty short, only a few minutes, but it does lead to some important events in Kingdom Hearts lore. Basically, it starts off with an old man named Xanort putting his pupil Ventus on an island to die after he did something to him that basically caused Ventus's heart and soul to be cleaved in half and Ventus is dying. As Ventus is leaving the world, though, he bumps into a new heart being born into the world and they form a pact. Ventus is able to live thanks to this pact, and Xehanort later drops him off at his comrade Eriquis place to train with his students while Ventus recovers, and there's other reasons down the line that we find out why he wanted him there. Anyway, skip a few years later, and Terra and Aqua, Ventus's two friends, are taking the Mark of Mastery exam. Now, right here, we have another one of those Japanese word plays. Riku in Japanese means land. Terra in Latin means earth. Ventus in Latin means wind, while Sora in Japanese means sky. Aqua in Latin means water, while Kairi in Japanese means sea. So these three are already kind of by their name showing they're having connection with the original three heroes from Kingdom Hearts. It's kind of clever, but it's a common anime trope to have these kind of puns or name realizations. And for the most part, this is actually a pretty good one. Anyways, Terra flunks his Mark of Mastery exam because Eriquist and Xehanort see that he has darkness inside of him. Terra goes off to mope while Xehanort comforts him and then disappears. And then Ericus calls him and says that a bunch of monsters called Unverse are attacking the worlds and they need to go out and clear them. He sends Terra out specifically to find out what happened to Xehanort after he disappeared. Then sends Aqua to check on Terra as well as get Vin back because Vin decided to hightail it following Terra because they're both worried about what's happening to Terra when it comes to the whole darkness issue. Anyways, each of the Disney worlds kind of plays out as a three-told story. For example, um, Cinderella stage, Ventus plays the part where the mice make the dress. You have to find the dress material as Ventus. Then Terra escorts her to the ball. And then Aqua, of course, does the job of finding the slipper and getting Cinderella to wear it. And all the stages play like that. And yes, you will get plenty of times where they mentioned how they just missed the other characters. And yes, there's a whole bunch of timeline problems if you are really neurotic trying to fix, put it together. For example, um, Cinderella is the second stage for both Terra and Ventus. However, they come through way before Aqua, which Cinderella is her first stage. So Aqua's got to have the slowest space vehicle ever in order for that to happen. And yes, they tried to fix that whole problem by adding even more convoluted nonsense in the story in Dream Drop Distance, where Joshua tells Riku that each world operates on a different time axis. Useless BS to cover up just some um, moderate story problems which you would have telling this type of story in this way. Square Enix, don't do that anymore. Kingdom Hearts is confusing enough already. Basically, the whole story set up like Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith, with Xehanort being Palpatine. Terra does find him and starts getting manipulated by the guy. And here's where I have to give some props to um, Leaner Nimoy's role as Xehanort. He's just fantastic manipulating them. I'll go through each of the characters and their voice actors in a few moments, but just the way he manipulates Terra is beautiful. But basically, all three 
characters meet up in the Keyblade graveyard at the end for one final clash between Xehanort and his masked pupil Benitas, and then they all kind of wind up in their own personal hells. And no, I don't think that's a plot spoiler, because they tell you right at the beginning of the game that all three are going to end in tragedy when you hear a line like this. That would be the last night we ever spent beneath the same stars. Not exactly what you expect to hear if the game is promising you a happy ending, is it? Alright, rather than kind of just bore you with kind of this this what goes on in the rest of the story point on point point on point because each story stage is kind of told three times through three different characters I've already mentioned that before so to make it simpler I'm just going to go through each character and tell you my thoughts about them and what you experience with them throughout the adventures and also hit on the villains for a few points on their own and I'll try to avoid as many plot spoilers as possible but I'm going to get into one or two because it's kind of talked about a lot among Kingdom Hearts fans and it's kind of big in the series and no I'm not going to tell you why Terra's armor fights you in Kingdom Hearts 2 I want to save that plot spoiler for later but like I've said before Xehanort is Palpatine in Terra's Anakin Skywalker and that's where we'll start with Terra as Anakin Skywalker and my thoughts on him he's kind of this easily duped character and when you play through him most of the time you'll end up helping the villains although by accident he's more of the knuckles of the Kingdom Hearts series still the way he thinks might will always lead to right you can tell this guy is headed for trouble because he doesn't think and a lot like Anakin Skywalker he can be a little bit whiny and pushy at times but still, you do feel a little bit bad for him towards the end when, at the end of the day, his friends don't trust him. And that's more that leads him to the dark side more than Xehanort's. It's just this breakup of this friendship, of the fact that they don't really trust him, or even try to understand why he does some of the things. Most of the bad things he does, he's usually duped. He's actually a good guy and a good character. I just wish he was done by a better voice actor. Darkness always finds a way into a wounded heart. You have to be strong. Strength of heart will carry you through the hardest of trials. That's one hell of a way to emote there. I mean, could you get any colder or flatter than that? Granted, that's probably the worst line of dialogue he utters throughout the entire game. However, several other lines of his fall flat, and the voice actor could have been better. Even worse, considering that with Terra, he's usually teamed up with leaner Nimoy Xehanort, and the two just clash when it comes to their acting performance, and not in a good way. I said, not the worst voice actor I've ever heard, but it's not a great performance by any means, which is unfortunate, because out of the three, Terra's the most interesting one. Moving on to Ventus, which is Roxas's little me, and I'll explain why he kind of looks that way. Alright, but before I get into why he looks like Roxas, I should tell you, Ventus is not supposed to be Roxas, nor does he act like Roxas, despite looking like him and sharing the same voice actor as him. Ventus is more closer aligned to acting like Sora from the original Kingdom Hearts games, and that's what you get from him when you play as him. He kind of befriends all kinds of characters, you team up with different characters as you go on along through your journey. He's a little younger than what Sora was when he first started in the original Kingdom Hearts, so he can be a little bit more sensitive when people reject him, kind of like a big kid, because that's what he is. And overall, he's an interesting character. Now, going on to why Ventus looks like Roxas, well, it's kind of to show the bond between him and Sora. He and Sora do not meet in Birth by Sleep. In fact, he and Sora so far in the series have not met at all. However, when I told you at the beginning that a heart connected with them and saved his life, well, that heart belongs to the original series protagonist, Sora. So therefore, Ventus's heartless, which is Venetus, has Sora's face. And Sora's nobody, Roxas, has Ventus's face. It's kind of a neat way of showing the two's connections without having them ever met. 
as far as what Vanitas looked like when he was created, my thought is if you're thinking that much about it, you're thinking too hard into it. Now let's talk about Aqua, the dumb mage. I mean, the idiot mage. The really stupid... Yeah, she's a dimwit. I really don't like Aqua. And yeah, before people start criticizing me, I understand she's kind of got the most voluptuous body Square Enix could give her and still have it be in a Disney game. She's rocking the blue hair that only works on anime. But for me, folks, it's always been about the personality and interest when it comes to women, and I don't think I'd get along with Aqua very well. Mainly, she's got this whole attitude that she's right and knows what's best for her friends, even when she doesn't and they disagree, or to put it the way Vin does. Aqua, now that you're a Keyblade Master, you've let it go to your head. Understatement of the century, Ventus. Still don't believe me? Well, in Kingdom Hearts, the whole idea is that I guess darkness comes from the dark emotions, greed, despair, all of that. Terra is facing those emotions all through his quest and ultimately makes a few really big mistakes, some that Aqua has every right to be really pissed at. However, in this scene right before the end, they're about to face Xehanort, someone who is a quote full-blown Keyblade Master, you would think she would be saying stuff to keep that darkness in check. Instead, she just flat out condemns him and says he's already lost. What else is darkness but hate and rage? Xehanort is feeding the dark fires within you, making you fight. You'll go astray again. No, she's not saying she's going to play backup. She's not saying she's going to watch over him. She's just saying he's already lost. Again, there's a time and place for that time of chewing out. Terra deserves it at this point. But maybe you should wait until after you defeated the evil wizard and his apprentice that just said they were going to kill all three of you and do some other stuff that's really, really bad. Just a suggestion, especially if you're worried about his dark powers going out of control. Dummy. Of course, there's a few other dumb things she does, like she accidentally passes her keyblade along to the most kidnapped video game princess outside of a Nintendo franchise, and then skips the small boy she meets on Destiny Island because she believes giving him a keyblade will cause him to fight with his best friend Riku. Yeah, that worked out real well. And yes, if you're wondering if Sora didn't get the Keyblade from either three of these, does that mean the lines like this have been retconned out? Chosen wielder of the Keyblade. More like accidental acquirer of the Keyblade. We really don't know how you got that. You really should give it back. Last time I heard you stabbed yourself with it caused all sorts of trouble, so you really should give that here before you hurt yourself. Yeah, all the lines with Sora being the chosen one have now been completely retconned out in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. That's not like a major part of the first three games just tossed out the window or anything because it is. But anyways, back to Aqua. I do feel some sympathy for her. I don't hate the character completely not to feel sorry for her. Anybody who has two of her closest friends ask this of her in the same day had my sympathy. I'm asking you as a friend. Just put an end to me. Translation, please kill me basically what he's saying, and she gets asked by that by Terra too towards the end of the game. So, she's definitely got a lot on her plate, so I'm not going to badmouth some of the stuff she goes through as being completely unfair, and yes, I do get a little teary-eyed during the unlockable blank points video in which she learns that her friends are in more trouble than she thought, but help is on the way because Sora has found out about her little problems. Alright, let's move on to the two villains of this game before I wrap it up, Benitas and Xehanort. Vanitas, for the most part, is just kind of this evil Darth Vader-esque kid. He's Ventus's heartless, he goes around, he messes things up, he causes trouble for Ventus, Aqua, and Mickey, and not much can really be said about him. He's voiced by Haley Joel Osmond, like I said, doing a light Yagami voice. 
or you'll never see Terra again. What? Get real! I can see Terra anytime I want. Like right now? He's leaving you behind. And by the time you catch up, he'll be a different person. Vanitas is an okay bad guy, but he's not as good as Leaner Nimoy again as Master Xehanort, saving this guy for the end because he is the best. He is one of the reasons why I do enjoy the story in Birth by Sleep. He's basically doing an Emperor Palpatine impression because that's what Xehanort is. He's kind of this sneaky, smarmy little guy who is after power, although at first he wouldn't think so, and you can understand why Terra would be duped by him. He said he's kind of charming, he looks like this frail old man, but he isn't. He's very, very smart and cunning and always two steps out in front of the game. Ventus is on his way home. If you could have seen the fury in his eyes, I'm certain he's capable of anything. I fear the boy may attempt to force the truth out of Ericus. Master Terra, you must hurry back and see to your friend's safety. I just love the fact that he waves his hand so fast when he's BSing Terra and just duping him into doing something that's pretty terrible in the next scene. And just the way he sets it up is beautiful. Again, great voice acting by the late Leaner Nimoy and some fantastic animation by Square Enix really pull off this character. He's a very memorable villain even though his death count stands at zero right now in like say a Kefka or a Sephiroth from Final Fantasy series. He's not necessarily a murderer but he's just so manipulative and what he does to these characters is just so evil that he's just a villain that you love to hate and that's what I like about him. And of course my favorite scene comes with a flashback scene with Eriquist who's played by Mark Luke Skywalker Hamill confronting him and watch what happens. Beginning you see, not an end. At birth every one of us emerges from darkness into a world of light, do we not? Poetic excuses. If words won't dissuade you, only one thing will! Leaner Nimoy, of course, is famous for playing another pointy ear cold blooded bastard named Spock from Star Trek, and like I said, there he just whooped Mark Hamill from Star Wars. Let the nerd rage fly! Anyways, I just love the story. I just love the characters in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Yes, sometimes Terra's lines will fall flat, and there are some problems with Aqua. I don't hate her. I am looking forward to what her parts are going to be in Kingdom Hearts 3 and Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Volume 2. It's just, when they call her the wise mage and that she's kind of supposedly the leader or the big sister of the party, I just don't see it. <laughs> But for the most part, the story in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep is really excellent. The three-part stories in each world can be a little confusing, and if you try to put a timeline of the characters together, you're going to be in for a headache. But if you accept them as is, this is when Aqua steps in, this is when Vinta steps in here, and not trying to put a timeline of what another character is doing, you'll be fine. But if you're that geeky, um, I suggest buying a huge can of aspirin because you're going to need it because it doesn't really make sense. But like I said, accept it as is, as the story wants to tell you. These stories are quite good, and the way they pace the characters out are really good, like Ventus becoming friends with the dwarves or shrinking down to mouse size or Aqua playing the diplomat and Stitch are all really good. So for the most part, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep is, like I said, my favorite story. It does retcon a lot from the original Kingdom Hearts, but it also adds in a lot of newer stuff as well as explaining some of the lore from the past games. Overall, you can't beat Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep story, and when you put in the phenomenal gameplay, you can understand why I see this as one of the best games in the series. Even when it does retcon a few stuff, even if it's major stuff from the original game, it's still doing it with the heart of building towards Kingdom Hearts 3. And just like I said, the new lore and stuff is really good. It gets a little convoluted around here, but for the most part, Birth by Sleep is a really great game. 
Now, after Birth by Sleep, I can only see the series getting better. I can't wait to do the narrative on Kingdom Hearts. Recoded. Crap! Somebody put an end to me. While I sit down and contemplate what could be a worse fate, getting your mind fused to an unfeeling suit of armor, or watching Kingdom Hearts recoded cutscenes again, I'll let you guys click on one of these two thumbnails. One will let you subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you as part of my community. I do reviews and editorials like this all the time, and I would love to have you guys participate. As far as the other thumbnails goes, it will go on to my game review. This was a story analysis. I kind of go and nitpick a bunch of things in the Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep story and critique it. This link will lead you to my game review where I go more into the gameplay and graphics rather than just stick to the story. If you want to see what the rest of the game is like, feel free to click that other thumbnail. This is Tommy the Keyblade Master signing out and thanking you for watching.